Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of a q and A. I I got to do with some members of the Final Fantasy XV team. Uh, I have four members and a few of their answers here. I figured when I did the Final Fantasy XIV one, I should, maybe I should try to do for some other Square Enix games. So I actually submitted one for Final Fantasy XV as well, and uh, I got those answers back uh, just yesterday, so I wanted to make a video on it real quick, recording it live on Twitch as well, so you guys get to see it first. So we have some questions about the main game, uh, some of it in relation to the DLC, and then we have some direct questions for the DLC. For questions for the main game, uh, we're going to be looking at answers that came from senior game designer uh, Nakazawa and game director Tabata. Of course, you all know Hajime Tabata, Tabby as he has to be called at PAX East. So uh, if you see him, call him Tabby. Anyway, my first question was, in the March update, uh, players were given a deeper look into the events of Chapter 13 from Gladio's perspective, something that I personally love. Uh, will we see more gameplay segments like that in the future updates? Uh, so the answer we got from that was, though it doesn't take place from the perspective of the buddies, meaning that this would most likely be Noctis-centric gameplay, or even centric around someone other than the main four, we're scheduled to have some updates that will delve deeper into the events in the game with more detail. These updates have existed as part of our update roadmap to further enhance the experience of the game. So just more confirmation that we will have in, uh, more segments added to the main game itself that aren't part of the DLC, um, and that they're not necessarily going to be from Prompto or Ignis's perspective. So that's going to that's gonna definitely add a little bit more replayability, or people who pick it up for the first time will have some additional content to look forward to somewhere down the line. Now for question two, we have uh, the March update, it's behind us now. So what other plans do they have for the updates in the coming months? So they have major updates planned at three month intervals. That's normal considering that the DLCs are also currently releasing at three month intervals, though we don't have a confirmed release date for episode Ignis. Among things we've already announced, we now have an idea when we will be implementing the off-road regalia and free driving. This was something they actually said was just part of a technical test and that they wanted to put it in the game but now that they say when it's pretty much a confirmation that the off-road regalia and the free driving around final fantasy 15 will be patched into the game sometime in the future uh, please look forward to further information regarding that uh, now for question three, many players feel like 15 was too easy. You guys know I had to ask this, uh, mostly due to the lack of restriction on item usage minus one dungeon. Are there any plans to implement more options to further increase the challenge of the game? I had to ask this as much as I like 15 and its combat system, it's too easy. I want to challenge myself more and playing through uh, some other games right now is definitely reminding me of what kind of challenge I'm looking for. They said currently there's no plans, but there's an upcoming player survey, uh, and if players suggest that they want increased difficulty, there's the possibility they'll explore an option. So if you guys get that survey, or if you guys see that survey around Reddit, or somebody passes it to you, and you're someone who's interested in playing 15 again, if it gets increased difficulty settings, be sure to put that in the feedback, because that's something that they're actually looking forward to. Uh, question number four, you recently showed some footage of in-development features such as driving off-road and destroyable terrain. In that video, there's an enemy model for Cerberus, which, whom we got to see in Kingsglaive. Might we expect to face off against the three-headed demon in the future alongside the Dia Weapon, another enemy that was in Kingsglaive that we never really got to encounter in the main game? So the footage they showed during GDC was examples of technical tests. Um, that kind of a roundabout way of not really answering because the whole point is they clearly made a 3d model for cerberus that they could fight against which my question was more along the lines of will we fight it of course if we see that these features are high on players wish lists we'll look into it so that's like a yes and a no because people want to fight cerberus last i checked so again in the player survey put that in there and they said it would be fight fun to fight against the diamond weapon wouldn't it yeah, you know, I think it might be as long as it's as long as it's not like the adamantois fight. You know, it's got to be a little bit a little bit uh, more I don't know what the right word is. It's it's got to be less glitchy. There you go. It's got to be less buggy, not like like phasing through stuff and I need to be able to use the ring on it if I'm patient enough. Uh, anyway, uh, question number five. Episode Gladiolus launched with a score attack feature, allowing players to speedrun the DLC while attempting to get the highest score possible. Has there been, ever been any consideration to incorporate score attack into existing dungeons in the main game, such as Menace Dungeons? My favorite thing about Episode Gladiolus is score attack. I think it was easily the best design content. Clearly, 
designed especially for episode Gladio, especially with the way that his, um, his countering system works. But if we could get something like that, I would probably run Menace Dungeons repeatedly to see if I could get a higher score or to perfect it. Um, so, but they said because it was designed for episode Gladio, uh, it wouldn't really, it would be a pretty big challenge to get into the main game. So don't expect anything along those lines. Uh, maybe one day, but they said it would be a pretty high challenge. So it's definitely not high on a post game release feature i know they're probably rather put time on the dlcs or the uh, multiplayer mode that we've seen a, a few minor previews of in recent months uh for the next question and this was the last question they uh answered for the main game very simple one are there any plans to add 15's own soundtrack to the in-game mp3 player i love the final fantasy 15 soundtrack but because you spend a lot of your time in the car listening to other final fantasy games i feel like it kind of gets drowned out to all the other classics that i kind of know and love from final fantasy so they said it's currently undetermined um which i, I mean maybe maybe not that's that's they, they're thinking about it they just don't know if they've done it um, now, the rest of the questions are based on the DLC. Uh, now, for that, we're going to be switching over to answers from uh, the DLC producer, Sawatari, and the game design uh, section manager, Shida. So for question number seven, time quests have been a fun and rewarding way or a reason to pick up 15 between DLCs. I've at least enjoyed them, especially the Dread Behemoth. Uh, however, the most recent time quest literally lasted for a whole month. Uh, how is the team deciding the time frame? Because it seems such a, so strange to have a full month between the timed quests, especially because they were models that already existed in the game. I just didn't understand why there was such a huge gap there. Um, duration of the time quests are determined by their content, so I'm not really sure what that means. Um, however, time quests will actually be a focal point in the next game update. So we know their major updates are every three months. I don't know if this is one of their minor game updates versus one of the major ones, but we'll just have to wait and see on that one. We'll see what actually ends up happening. Uh, please look forward to it. Question number eight, Episode Prompto is the next major DLC for Final Fantasy XV. What major differences will exist between Episode Gladiolus and Episode Prompto? Uh, everything from the playable characters to the scenario and the gameplay. One of the core concepts of the Episode DLC is to fully bring to light the characteristics of each of the characters. Therefore, Episode Gladiolus capitalized on the characters of Gladiolus, resulting in powerful battle action. For Episode Prompto, they plan to provide a plot that focuses on Prompto's inner world, you know, how he really functions on the inside. And it's a shooter type action gameplay that makes the most of his weapons. So it's far more, it's, it's probably closer to something like a third person shooter from the sounds of that. Um, and I'm looking, I mean, after the previews we've seen, we've only ever seen a few seconds preview of episode Prompto, but I was immediately more excited for it than I was for episode Gladio, as much as it had the high octane action, some excellent uh, music and the score attack mode, like I mentioned earlier, episode Prompto is really the one I'm looking forward to most. Episode Ignis, I I'm, I, I'm okay. I'm curious to see why episode Ignis is last, but I'm not as excited as I was for, uh, as I currently am for episode Prompto. Uh, question number nine, the community has expressed significant interest in additional DLC episodes, including Lunafreya, Aranea, Arden, and Ravis. Has there been, or has there been, have there been, because, okay, good thing they didn't catch me on that one. Have there been any talks uh, about expanding upon these possibilities? Perhaps a DLC Season 2. This has been suggested a few times um, because obviously they're currently calling the DLC Season 1 and a lot of people wondered why. Uh, skip, right, skip right to the end of this answer. Currently no plans for a Season 2 in particular. Um, however, the rest of the answer, development team considered a wide range of possibilities when creating DLC content. Of course, took players' reactions into consideration too. As a result, for the episode DLC, we arrived at the consensus it would be a good idea to feature the bros who travel with Noctis. We're definitely aware of the increasing interest among players in Luna, Freya, Arne, and Arden. We'll continue to consider if there's some way we can deliver on these expectations. I really hope they do. We know that some of those characters Characters are potentials for appearing in the multiplayer DLC. I'd love something that expands more upon, especially uh, Arden, the main villain of the game, because uh, he has the makings of a lot of the makings of a great villain, but we don't get to fully explore those. So I definitely would like to see more on that if I had to pick one in particular. Uh, but currently, no plans for a season two, so we may or may not see stuff that brings out more of their story sometime in the future. Uh, and then the final question I had was, uh, can we expect a similar amount of playtime for Episode Prompto and Episode Ignis compared to Episode Gladiolus? Episode Gladiolus had, I, I finished it pretty much in a morning, uh, including the score attack mode, because I had kind of picked up on the combat pretty quick. The story, it took me about maybe an hour, an hour and a half to complete Gladiolus the first time through. And then I had to do it multiple times, about 20 to 30 minute play sessions each for the score attack. And Core, I got kind of lucky and uh, I beat him in about a minute and a half, so... 
Um, I was curious to see if we get a similar amount of playtime. I feel like that's a pretty big deal when you're talking about DLC. And Episode Gladiolus is one measuring stick as far as volume of content. So to me, that's one thing. For the upcoming Episode DLC, we are marching along to provide content that will satisfy our players, so we hope you look forward to what lies ahead. So it's one measuring stick as far as volume of content. So it is in somewhat comp it is somewhat comparable to Episode Gladio, but they're not specifically saying in what way. Um, obviously, Episode Prompto and Ignis probably won't be designed to have that score attack mode. So what it probably means by the measurement is you have a story scenario, you have a bonus, and then you have an additional mode. That's kind of the volume of Episode Gladiolus's content. But the length is not specifically mentioned here. Maybe they mean the length and maybe they don't mean additional modes. There's really no specific way of... Of, uh, of knowing in this particular case. But ultimately, I got a lot of the questions I wanted to get uh, answered. Hopefully, I can do some sort of follow-up with this sometime in the future as we uh, as more of their updates in the DLC launch. It is definitely a weird thing that they're doing so many updates, uh, even, just not, even just free ones for the single-player game. But I do appreciate especially the story aspects being added in because that was a complaint that a lot of people did have. And I do respect that they're actually going out of their way to add those kinds of free content in the game and that there's a lot currently under consideration. But anyway, uh, before I wrap up this video, I'd like to say, first of all, thank you to, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the whole things every time, senior game, senior game designer Nakazawa, game director Hajime Tabata, um, then we have uh, DLC producer Sawatari, and game design section manager Shida. Thank you for answering my questions. Also, thank you to Square Enix for helping connect us for this uh, little email interview that we did right here. Big shout out to you guys. Really appreciate all you've been doing for the channel here uh, so we can just get this q and I'm so not used to doing this and it's so much fun. Uh, hopefully we could do more in the future. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, these, this little Q&A about Final Fantasy 15 real quick. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share to stay up to date on everything you want to know. Final Fantasy 14, 15, doesn't matter. Just hit that subscribe button and like the video. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up on my Twitch stream. I will see you guys next time. Um, I'm going to hang out with the Twitch stream for a few more minutes. Over on YouTube, I will see you next time. So thank you for watching. And until then, take care.